Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I want to start today with, uh, I'm going to show you something you've already seen. Thanks to the fine people at Hydra, we debuted a trailer <laughs> last week. The good news is, over 70 million people have already watched that trailer. It shattered every record, first day, first week, it's amazing. I'm assuming some of those 70 million are in here today. In case not, or in case maybe you want to see it on a big giant screen for the first time, here it is, the teaser for Avengers Age of Ultron. sitting right down there somewhere. So He's working very hard right now in the cutting room, helping us finalize phase two of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you for coming today, Joss. Here's what you know about. Guardians of the Galaxy was the 10th Marvel Studios film, the 10th film within our cinematic saga. I believe somebody just whispered in my ear, 10 films over $7 billion. We're pretty proud of that. And it's thanks to you. Thanks to you. And thanks to you, our most recent film, Guardians of the Galaxy, is the number one film of the year so far here in North America. And I believe in the next two or three days, it will be the number two film around the world so far this year. That blows our minds. And it is thanks to all of you who believed and Peter Quill, and Gamora, and Drax, and Rocket Raccoon. And what's the name of that other guy? Groot! That's it. That's the one. Uh, what James Gunn did with that movie exceeded all of our expectations. You guys coming out and telling us you like new things. You like things that are fresh. Speaking of which, Ant-Man, 
Peyton Reed is working on Inman right now in Atlanta. Day 50 of photography is happening as we speak. Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Evangeline Lilly, we're very excited to share what is going to come very soon on that. But we didn't ask you here today to tell you things you already know. We brought you here today because we love, when we have information to reveal, we want to reveal it. Sometimes that's in a press release, sometimes that's in San Diego Comic Con if everything comes together well, and sometimes that's on a random Tuesday at 11 a.m. at the El Capitan Theater. So let's talk about, let's talk about phase three. Now what you know about phase three, if you're following along, There it is. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. No, no. We have planted a lot of flags. That's what you do in show business. You know you're going to make a movie. You're not sure what movie it is, but you need a weekend, so you plant a flag on a weekend. And this is what we've announced. Actually, I think we have officially announced that Captain America 3 will be May 6, 2016. We couldn't be happier with what Joe and Anthony Russo, who are right down there, the directors of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, did an amazing job. They reinvented the franchise of Captain America. They chattered and changed everything going forward from that movie, and they are back for Captain America 3. But even that, I think you already knew. So let's now talk about something that is debuting on November 4th, 2016, that we are announcing now, officially, for the first time. about Doctor Strange. I think I've been talking about Doctor Strange since the day I was born. Uh, because I love it, because it's very, very important to us, and because it takes us a while to work on these movies before we're ready to stand in front of you and announce them. But Doctor Strange is finally coming to theaters. Scott Derrickson is working on it right now. The director, Scott Derrickson, is working on it. We have a great writer named John Spates who's working on the draft, telling the story of Dr. Stephen Strange, a brilliant neurosurgeon, uh, bit of an arrogant fellow who gets into a car crash and ruins what he believes are the tools of his trade, his hands. And a downward journey starts for him that leads him to stranger and stranger corners of the world where he encounters quacks and all sorts of things that aren't going to help his hand until he meets one person named the Ancient One who helps him tap into what excites us the most about this new franchise, which is the supernatural. And in the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of the supernatural, that involves everything from quantum mechanics to string theory to parallel dimensions, all of which, if you meet the Ancient One and train to become a master of the mystic arts and maybe even become the Sorcerer Supreme one day, you can manipulate with your hands and your thoughts. The idea of this film is to open up an entire new corner of the cinematic universe, uh, Again, right out of the comic books, the whole supernatural element is a huge part. We have our earthbound heroes, we have our cosmic heroes. We now want to enter through with Strange this world of parallel dimensions. Scott, as I said, is working very hard on creating visuals, the likes of which we haven't seen in any Marvel movie before, and we hope the likes of which you've never seen in any movie ever. So that's Doctor Strange coming in November of 2016. <laughs> Let's jump ahead now. Let's jump ahead to May 5th, 2017, and uh, there's actually somebody up there who wants to, uh, to tell you himself. Hey everybody, this is James Dunn. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there with you. I'm here in Tokyo, Japan, serving as a jury member on the Tokyo International Film Festival, but I wanted to let you all know that I'm working very hard on the script for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'm very excited about the movie, so excited in fact that I don't want to have to wait until July of 2017 for the movie to be released. I think we'd rather release the movie in May of 2017. I think that sounds right. May 5th, 2017 is a new release date for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 so that we can spend the whole summer with you guys. So we announced the earlier date, but frankly, 
we knew the movie was going to do well. We didn't know how well. And it encouraged us, frankly, to help put into place everything else I'm going to talk about today for the next, uh, the next 10 films, but also to move it up to, what did I do? To move it up to May 5th, 2017. Who wants to talk about July 28th, 2017? <laughs> July 28th, 2017 is the return of one of the most popular Avengers. returning as Thor, of course Tom Hiddleston, returning as Loki. I knew, I knew this audience would know what that strange word means, Ragnarok. Well, what we will do between now and the release of this movie is educate the rest of the world as to what that word means, and it's a very important word that means, essentially, the end of all things. This is a very important movie for us in our uh, phase three timeline, as the Russos did so well, reinventing Captain America in the Winter Soldier and changing everything that would come after it. That is the plan for Thor Ragnarok, to take Thor to another level of his own franchise, and in fact, picks up right after we leave him in Avengers 2, and will impact everything to come afterwards. Thor Ragnarok. So here we have three existing franchise characters, one new one. So I think it's time on November 3rd, 2017, to announce a new one. You guys want to see a new character for the first time? Okay. Here he is. Shala himself and all of Wakanda is one of the most unique, interesting, fascinating, and integral characters in the entire Marvel Comics history. We want him to become that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe history. And in fact, we have already started seeding things in the films leading up to this moment and to the reveal of his. And as a matter of fact, something I already showed you today contained an Easter egg that leads directly to the Black Panther. He is very, very exciting for us, tapping into the advanced African nation of Wakanda and all that comes with it, the family drama, he's, he's a bit of a prince, he may become a bit of a king, but it's also about how this isolationist country of Wakanda needs to meet the world. Maybe it goes well, maybe it doesn't. We will find out on November 3rd, 2017. May 4th, 2018, I'm going to skip over. I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to skip it. Because I like this trend that's happening right now, introducing new characters to you. So I'm going to go right to July 6, 2018, with the introduction of yet another very, very important character for the first time into the MCU. Now let me clarify, Cap Captain Marvel's gone by many names in the comics, has had many people uh, who have inhabited that costume, used that power base. I want to make it very clear that this Captain Marvel's name is Carol Danvers. <laughs> this, film, this film has been in the works almost as long as Doctor Strange, almost as long as Guardians of the Galaxy was before it came out. And one of the key things was figuring out how to do what we really wanted to do with it, which was introduce one of, if not the most powerful hero into the entire MCU. One who also straddles two worlds. Her origins are very much earthbound, and yet her adventures and her power base is very much uh, comes from the cosmic realm. Guardians of the Galaxy came out. The audiences of the world told us they love that cosmic realm. So this was the time to bring out Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel for the very first time. And let's round out 2018, shall we? November 2nd, 2018 introduces not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but dozens of new heroes into the cinematic universe. It will be our 20th film. It seemed time to open the floodgates a little bit wider. We really, we really do believe that the Inhumans 
can be a franchise, and perhaps a series of franchises, onto themselves. They are the Inhumans. They have dozens of different power bases. They have an amazing social structure in which you go through these Terrigen Mists and you don't know what you're going to become on the other side, which gives amazing character drama that we love to play with and tons of spectacular uh, new powers, new effects. With the 20th movie, it felt time to continue to further refine and further expand what the cinematic universe is all about. Now, I, for I forgot this May 4th, 2018 one. <laughs> And again, now we've talked about the new, let's talk about what has come before, and let's talk about the notion that we have always had a plan. We have always had a plan from the moment Nick Fury broke into Tony Stark's house and told him he was a part of a bigger universe, he just didn't know it yet. Well, I think he knows it now, and by May 4th, 2018, everybody will know it because it is the beginning of the culmination of everything that has come before. Legend tells us one thing, history another. But every now and then we find something that belongs to both. There are relics that predate the universe itself. Ancient forces of infinite destruction. You have no idea what you're dealing with. This is beyond you. Why would you risk your life for this? Because right now, life's giving us a chance. Whatever happens on Earth, that up there, that's, that's the end game. Part 1, Infinity War, and announcing for the first time May 3rd, 2019, Avengers Infinity War Part 2. It is unbelievably exciting to us to continue building the plan that all of you tell us you like, and you like, and you believe in this plan, and it now is going to kick into a whole other gear. So here's how I want to leave you today. I want to leave you not just with, with a teaser you've already seen, hopefully some exciting announcements, but Joss Whedon was kind enough to bring an exclusive scene from Avengers 2 to show you guys. Now, this is, uh, this is a different scene than what people who watch tonight's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will see. This is just for you guys here. This is, this is a, it's a, it's a short scene. It doesn't have any visual effects in it because all the visual effects that are done, you've already seen in the teaser. So this is a scene that takes place in the middle of the movie after the Avengers, uh, frankly, have gotten their asses whooped by Ultron. And this is two Avengers sort of struggling and dealing with that fact. Enjoy. There. Thor didn't see where he was going for answers. Sometimes my teammates don't tell me things. It's kind of open floor would be the exception. Yeah, give him time. We don't know what the Maximoff kid showed him. I don't know what she showed you. I just know I made you do something stupid. Earth's mightiest heroes. Pulled us apart like cotton candy. It seems like you walked away, all right? Is that a problem? I don't trust a guy without a dark side. Call me old-fashioned. Well, let's just say you haven't seen it yet. Ben and I were doing the research. That would affect the team. That would end the team. Isn't that the mission? 
Isn't that the why we fight? So we can end the fight? So we get to go home? <laughs> Every time someone tries to win a war before it starts, innocent people die. Every time. Nice. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a really good clip, actually, John. Uh, it, gets, it gets embarrassing when we're standing here and I go, plan, we have a plan, and then I find myself doubting the plan, and I go, I'm having buyer's remorse on that Serpent Society subtitle for Captain America 3. I'm, it feels like there must be, there must be a better title somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Chadwick Boseman.